Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to the channel. As Battlefield 2042 is coming to an end and there will be no more weapons, I wanted to start a series of videos to go over all of the weapons and give you their best setups with all the attachments explained. Obviously, there was a lot of requests for single weapon setup guides and that convinced me to make these videos. Now, these videos are going to be categorized and today we're going to go over all of the SMGs of Battlefield 2042 with their best setups. So hit the like button, make sure to subscribe to the channel if you're looking for more content like this because the next episodes are just around the corner. So without further ado, let's get right into it. I go over all the attachments for each weapon and give you the full setup for that specific weapon in the end so you can pause the video after each weapon is explained. So the first SMG of the game is PBX-45 and I have to say I just love this weapon. It's fair to say it's got some good fire rate to damage ratio. It's got a perfect hip fire accuracy and the recoil on this thing is pretty much just vertical so you don't have to be basically worry about that horizontal recoil which is harder to control. Now for the setup I would say you have two main choices. If you have no problem with a little bit of more recoil and want more accuracy, the tactical compensator is your way to go and gives you the edge in terms of accuracy. But if you want your SMG stable and capable of long range encounters as well, I would say champion muzzle break is going to be a better choice. And lastly, for those flanks, you've got the wrapped suppressor as your third slot. Now moving on to underbarrel, I believe you need nothing but the MGL laser sight. I believe if you want to make a close range weapon even deadlier, there is no better attachment than the MGL because it gives you hipfire accuracy while moving and recoil control with literally no downsides. For the PBX, however, because you have a perfect hipfire accuracy by nature, you can go ahead and equip the LWG grip if you want some more accuracy while moving, but my recommendation is still the MGL laser sight. For magazine, if you want to have maximum fire rate, go with the close combat for the first slot. The second slot should be standard issue extended. If you want more damage in the expense of some fire rate, then switch the slots between the two. And lastly, for the third slot, just go with the subsonic to match with that suppressor. You need nothing more than a red dot sight for this setup since we're focusing on close range and extremely close range gunfights. And the final setup should look like this. Moving on to PP29, one of the most powerful SMGs in the game, if not the most powerful. You've got a 60 round magazine which never really runs out of ammo and a sick damage model. With that being said, some people even use it as an assault rifle and it does a pretty decent job as well. For the setup, starting off with muzzle attachments as usual, because this weapon has some horizontal recoil, your best option here is the Archon Tactical Muzzle Break to lower the effect of that sidekick. For the second slot, this is not my favorite, but if you are one of those guys who prefer to have some long range capabilities as well, go with the extended barrel. It will decrease the fire rate, but will give you some more velocity as well, and the damage per distance drop off will be lowered, so that's going to be a better option for end range combat. And finally, for the sneaky flanks, we've got the wrapped suppressor as well. Now, you don't have a choice for the underbarrel, meaning that we will skip this one and go straight up to magazines. Now, to get the most fire rate possible out of this weapon, we go for the standard issue rounds. Then to match the extended barrel, we've got the high power ammo. And lastly, to match that suppressor, we've got the subsonic ammo and there goes all of the slots for magazines. Now for the weapon sights, you need a red dot, obviously, but if you want the extended barrel as well, you need some higher magnification scope. And in this case, I believe the ghost hybrid should do the trick. The final setup for the weapon should look something like this. Next up, we've got the MP9, a weapon that so many people hate for their own reasons, yet it's still, in my opinion, a decent SMG in the hands of a pro. People don't like the damage model, but there are positive aspects to this weapon that absolutely compensate for that lower damage. Perfect hip fire accuracy, literally no recoil, and a drum mag. So starting off with muzzle attachments, because this weapon is the definition of a no recoil weapon, I would rather invest more in accuracy and go for the tactical compensator as my first option. However, some people just don't like that. And I really understand because that tactical compensator can sometimes uh, just mess with that recoil. So if you are one of those guys, just put the champion muzzle break on the weapon and it should be fine. For the sneaky flanks, however, although I don't really like having suppressors on this weapon solely because of damage issues, I'd say the best option here is going to be the type 4 heavy suppressor. But if you guys don't want to go that heavy, the wrapped suppressor would do the trick and it's up to you to choose one based on your playstyle. I suggest the wrapped suppressor, by the way. And for the underbarrel, the MGL laser sight is the best one here. And the first slot goes to that. But since this weapon has a crazy good hip fire accuracy as well, you can pick the LWG grip instead of that MGL laser sight. And it's up to you to choose one between them. Uh, my favorite is the MGL, by the way. For magazines, close combat drum should be the first slot. Second slot goes to close combat extended and third slot goes to close combat. The reason why I don't like the subsonic rounds on this weapon is the fact that you only get 25 rounds, which is just not enough taking the damage model of this weapon into consideration. Lastly, you need a red dot sight and the setup is complete and ready to go and it looks like this. Next up, we've got the K30, also known as the popular Chris Vector. 
This weapon has the highest rate of fire among all the weapons in the game and it absolutely shreds in close range. 1200 RPM. That's no joke, man. The recoil of this thing is straightforward and easy to control only if you use the right attachments and that's why I use the champion muzzle brake on this thing. I personally find it easier to control the recoil like that. I've also tried the tactile compensator but that way the recoil would just be ridiculous. Next up you've got a type 4 heavy suppressor for the sneaky flanks and that's gonna be it for muzzle. For under battle you really need nothing more than the MGL laser sight and I mean it when I say it. Don't think about anything else and trust me on this one. For the magazines, standard issue drum is the first choice, standard issue extended is the second and lastly to match that type 4 heavy suppressor and completely take you off radar, we go for subsonic ammunition. Put a red dot sight on this weapon and it should be ready to go looking like this. The next SMG is truly one of the deadliest weapons of the game, the AC9. Perfect damage model, perfect accuracy, little to no recoil and more than 1000 RPM fire rate. I mean, what else do you really want from an SMG? For the muzzle based on my experience, the champion muzzle break works the best and for the sneaky peeks behind the enemies, you need a wrapped suppressor. For under battle as usual, you've got the STNR laser sight, which is the equivalent to MGL in some weapons. Some weapons got both of them, the MGL is a bit better uh, looking at the stats. But here we've got the STNR and it's just as good as GMGL and you really need nothing more because it's simply just too good. So that's about the underbell. For magazines, close combat extended is the first choice since you get 40 rounds per mag, then close combat and lastly to match out the rapid suppressor you need these subsonic rounds. You need nothing more than a red dot on this beast and the final setup should look like this. Next up we've got the SCZ3 which is the latest and last SMG of the game. It honestly was a pretty balanced weapon even in the early days of season 7 and it still is. I believe having a champion muzzle break works best on this thing. Some people somehow like to put an extended barrel on it for some reason. I don't know like I don't like to do that because I believe if you want to engage in those longer ranges and still be CQB effective you just have better options. However if you want that extended barrel I won't stop you so the second slot goes to that and finally for the third slot just go with a wrapped suppressor and if you want to completely become a shadow in the expense of some damage then the PB heavy suppressor should be replaced with that wrapped one. For under battle as usual all you need is the STNR laser sight. Now for the magazines standard issue drum mag should be your go to option but for the second slot and to match that extended barrel if you're willing to use it go for the high power drum and lastly for the third slot to match that suppressor we go for the subsonic rounds. If you don't want to use that extended barrel, just use a standard issue extended mag instead of that high power drum and you should be good to go. I read that side for close quarters and a ghost hybrid for long ranges in case you want to use that extended barrel is what you need and the final setup should simply look like this. Now moving on to portal SMGs and starting off with the almighty P90. Since this weapon is a portal weapon you don't get a lot of choices when it comes to attachments and if I want to be honest here the P90 needs some getting used to but once you get over that phase things will get much easier. For the muzzle since this weapon has a nice amount of horizontal recoil you gotta go with the Arkham Tactical Muzzle Brake to lower that sidekick down and the second slot is gonna be filled with the wrapped suppressor for those sneaky flanks. For under barrel you have two choices which are the flashlight and the laser sight. The flashlight is literally useless but that laser sight is going to give you some hip fire accuracy so go ahead and equip that. For magazines you don't even have a choice so we skip this one and I believe a red dot sight should be enough on this weapon and the final setup should look like this. Next up we've got the AKS-74U, a weapon that recently got buffed in both accuracy and fire rate departments. I have to say it's way better than what it was before. I remember getting a T1 mastery on this weapon before that buff was a freaking nightmare and it really caused a lot of drama but right now I guess things are a bit easier. Oh and not to mention that the damage model on this weapon is sometimes comparable with assault rifles which is another positive side of this. Anyway about the attachments you don't have a lot of choices with this one. Factory muzzle for the first slot and the wrapped suppressor for the second. For under barrel I want to give you some choice here. If your playstyle has a lot of gun and run in it you need to go for the laser sight but if you tend to have a slower playstyle and you stand still while shooting then the Cobra grip should be your under barrel attachment. Mine's going to be the laser sight so I'm just going to put it there. For magazines however you don't get to choose. Standard issue extended and standard issue are the only choices you have and in this case you need to equip them both basically. And lastly for the weapon sight a red dot sight is always needed and because of its damage model you can put a ghost hybrid on for those longer ranges. And here's how the weapon should look like after all the attachments are in place. Last but not least we've got the most underrated submachine gun of the game the PP2000. This weapon is literally a no recoil one. Good amount of damage but the only issue here is the 
fire rate, which is 650 RPM. Now, because this weapon has little to no recoil from muzzle attachments, I'd rather stick to a tactical compensator for more accuracy, and for the second slot, a wrapped suppressor. There's no underbarrel attachment for this weapon, so we skip this one and go to magazines straight up. For the magazines, the attachments are not that better. You only have two options and you need them both equipped. Lastly, for the weapon side, just put a red dot sight on it and it should be ready to go. The final setup is going to look like this. And here you have it, guys. The best setup for every submachine gun in the game. Hope you guys enjoyed and hope it was helpful. The next category is going to be assault rifles and I'm pretty sure they're going to be just as important. So make sure to stay tuned because the video is going to be out soon. Thanks for watching and until next time, stay cool.